Welcome to another video by LSX Engines Tuning Marine. Continuing with the uh, Mercruiser 5.0 MPFI um, teardown, um, I've just removed the fuel system and uh, as a single piece or as an assembly. These, these two studs here held a bracket that held the uh, fuel water separator here. And then on the other side, there was a, uh, a bracket that held the fuel pump, uh, fuel cooler assembly that was hanging right down there. The fuel line came off right here. I used a special tool and uh, I already had a plastic version of this, but it wasn't doing too well. So I went and bought this tool. This is, um, I'm trying to see what this says on here. I think I used the 3 8 size, which would be this size right here. I think this thing, yeah, that size right there. Metal just seems to do a little better. You, you clamp this on here like that. And uh, actually it's further back and it, you push it in and it releases the little teeth on the on the connector and it pulls loose from that fitting. Um, I just found the metal, these metal tools tend to work a little better than plastic. So anyway, that's off. Um, it's a returnless system. This is returned and it's pinched off under this uh, insulator. I'm not gonna uncover that yet. Um, but it just had a single supply coming in. So I'll have to, I'm gonna learn a little bit more about that later. Um, normally your returns have returned back to the tank and this did not have that. So I'm not sure how it managed to do a return to the system. Even return to the system have returned uh, like on a modern Corvette. The fuel tank's in the, the uh, fuel pump is in the tank. It pumps out to a regulator somewhere on the frame and, the, and the, that regulator has a return back to the tank and it regulates there. So your, your supply line is basically at, at uh, full pressure all the way up to your engine. And uh, the, their return, they uh, are not vacuum referenced. The modern Corvette regulars are not vacuum referenced, so they have to uh, change the uh, fuel flow in the table based on engine load. I'll discuss that in, in a series of videos I have on tuning LS, LS motors, LSX motors, but that's another issue. So continuing on, I'm about to, uh, the next step is I'm gonna disassemble the um, flame arrestor and a lot of stuff going on right here so I can get uh, free access to the electrical and the harness. The harness is the next major item to come off, but I want to get some of this hardware out of the way so I can see what's going on. I believe there's, this is your, I think this is your idle air control motor. Um, it's kind of odd that it's, I think it's taking air from inside of the throttle body here. Bring it through here. That's some kind of valve. Let's it go over here and lets it go in. Um, let's see, where's the hose? The hose right here. There it is. So it's kind of hard to see it's covered up. There you go. So that hose there comes over here. Works this way right here. Normally, I would think that, that would be some kind of coolant um, connection, but in this in this application, I think it's air. But I'm going to verify that. And that's what I'm about to do. So I'm going to take the the flame wrist off, some of the throttle body components out of the way, and see what we got and see what we're working with. And then uh, I'll begin the video once I get the uh, flame wrist off and see what I'm dealing dealing with. All right, continue with the teardown. The uh, I would, my hunch was right that uh, that is an idle air control valve. There's your air intake. It's got a little piece of like a filter on the filter element on there, which I think is kind of, I don't know if I'd put that in there with the airflow. It may be sucked in the engine, but that's another issue. So this is your air intake after it's been uh, going, gone through the flame arrestor. Goes in here, comes through this hose, goes to here. This regulates how much air gets past the throttle plates. And it comes back over here and connects here. So that's an idle air control system. Um, it looks like it might be a Dodge part because this connector is typically what you see on Dodge. That looks more like a Dodge uh, connector than a GM connector. Uh, so that might be a Dodge part, not sure. Or Dodge and GM might source them from the same place. I don't know. But anyway, um, so at this time, I've decided not to pull the harness off just yet. What I'd rather do is get the stripper out because it's kind of a, it's like a little bit more, uh, uh, it's too busy in this area and I want to get it out of the way. So right off the bat, I noticed that there's no can sensor uh, plug here. And I've looked around, I don't see one and I don't recall, uh, I didn't unplug it. So uh, it might not have had a cam sensor. And uh, it's also got a crank sensor on the front of the engine, which is right there. So that crank sensor is providing the computer with the signal to control the uh, or the, with the RPM signal for the engine. And since the computer doesn't really care where the uh, rotation is, it just knows that it's got to spark uh, four times the revolution 
it relies on the distributor to distribute that spark. So there's no electrical connection on this on this distributor other than your coil, your main coil wire, which would be from here to there. In other words, there's no there's no low level low level low voltage electronics coming out of the distributor telling the computer anything. So you would think it doesn't do timing, but what is important is the sparks have to be distributed mechanically to the cylinder at the approximate right time. So I've got to mark. I'm gonna put a mark down here on this distributor, marking the the uh, intake manifold and the distributor location with a with a mark, so I can put it right back in the same place. Because uh, to pro to properly uh, look at this thing, I notice that it looks to me like it does not have the factory hold down bracket. I believe there's supposed to be a metal bracket around that square part that automatically puts this distributor in the right location. And it appears to me that it does not have that the proper bracket on it. So since it doesn't have the proper bracket, I'm gonna mark the uh, relative position of the distributor body and the, on the intake manifold just to be sure. So I'm gonna do that now and I'll pull, then I'll pull the distributor out. All right, in the process of marking the distributor location, or location my screwdriver tip wasn't exactly lined up on the distributor after I marked the uh, intake manifold. So this, this picture right here, this video is going to be very critical to line this thing back up. You can see that the marks are not lined up. The distributor is rotated slightly to the, uh, slightly counterclockwise relative to the mark on the intake manifold. So uh, this picture will be very valuable when I go to put this back together to get those marks in the proper perspective when I put it back together. Just wanted to show that before I pull this distributor out. All right, continuing with the teardown of this uh, 5.0 Merc Cruiser MPFI engine. Um, I've removed the distributor and I just want to make a note that I took the bracket, the uh, harness bracket that was attached to the back of the head right uh, around right here, like so. Um, I removed it first took out the two bolts here so that I could get access to the bolt that was holding the stripper down. It's, it's much easier to get through, get to right through there with that bracket out of the way. So the stripper is pulled out and it's marked so it's good to go. So I'm now about to pull the harness off and um, I'm just going to, before I actually pull it off and describe what I'm doing and then I'll come back and uh, pull the connectors off, um, off the camera and then show it once it's uh, almost ready to pull off the engine. So starting on the front, um, this, I don't know what it was too. Obviously there's nothing connected there because it's got this uh, plug with seals in it. So that wasn't used for anything. This is your coolant sensor connector. It's plugged in right there in the thermostat housing. Working my way back. Um, these wires here, I think uh, some of this must, I'm not sure what this was. I think it went to um, some kind of cor corrosion, cathodic corrosion protection system, I'm not sure. Um, I know two of these wires went to the level, the uh, the gear oil level re reservoir is sitting here, a level sensor in there. Uh, coming on up here, these these plugs here went to MEFI computer, which was mounted on the side of the riser. Uh, I'll pull those off very early on in this room, and when I was removing, removing the engine from the boat. All right, these are injector connectors. I've already taken these two loose, and um, the, they go back, if, if this was sequential fuel injection, which it may be, um, I don't see how it is without a cam sensor, but um, let's say it, just assume it is, or let's assume it's not, but, but normally these connectors have to go back on the same injector. So what I do is I use the proximity of where they were in the harness to tell me. So that's the most forward one. That's the next most forward one. And then coming into here, then you had that one and that one. So using where they are in the harness, if it's, it's, if it's vague, I will uh, put a piece of tape here so these two can't uh, come together, which I'm about to do because I'm not going to trust that connection. What I'll do, matter of fact, I'll put a piece of tape here and a piece of tape here. That way it separates and make sure you know when one is forward from the other. All right, coming on back. Um, I got this connector. That's your ignition coil connector. That's what fires your ignition coil. The computer has direct control of that. This is your um, ignition module. Um, this is what fires the coal. That provides the power. This goes, uh, let's see. 
So these wires go back to the computer, and the computer fires the coal through the module. Um, I have to look into that more. I know that this is how it was set up on the uh, 96 and up uh, Vortec V8 engines with a distributor. So anyway, moving, moving on, that was that's your connector at your ignition module. That's your coil connector. These relays were mounted on a metal bracket on the uh, riser. So this snapped off early on. This connector obviously wasn't used, it's got a plug on it. Moving down here, you've got a knock sensor connector. It unplugs from the harness right there, which I'll do now. Breezy as all get out. Well, maybe I can't do it now. I'll do it later when I get it, both hands on it. That's your knock sensor connector. This is a uh, something to do with oil pressure. It's a that pulls off there. I'll do that one easy enough. That's uh, got a nut. On, that's your oil sending unit for your gauge. I'm not, I'll pull that off later. I'll have a tool handy. This was the fuel pump. This went down to the fuel pump, which I've already removed. As I've explained before, this was a water pressure sensor in the back of the uh, power steering cooler. Moving on around here, this device I think is your MEFI uh, diagnostic port that you connect to a, a scanner to read the uh, what the uh, computer's doing, but I don't have one, so I'm not worried about it. I just know that you must mark the distributor to make sure it's back in the right place when you don't have a scanner. These were your trim, uh, trim wires. I'll uh, try to match them up with the boat and I'll put it back. This is your boat engine to, or boat to engine harness connector. Has most of your wires going back to your console for your gauges. These two connectors here, not used because they got rubber stoppers in them. This wire here runs down to your starter, uh, your starter power and your uh, uh, energizer for the starter. This again, um, I, don't, I don't even see any terminals in there you know, they're kind of corroded in there y'all see them now yeah those are the terminals are kind of green um not sure what that was i'll find that out later i don't recall what that was connected to this obviously um not sure what it's connected to either it might be some kind of timing shunt or something not sure you would think i would be kind of scared to pull all this off but i've done this enough times to not be afraid of it this is your map sensor connector. All this is relays. And, uh, this is a thermal uh, circuit breakers. I'm going to take them off as an assembly by removing this screw right here. And that this whole thing will come off with the harness. And then you've got your, obviously you got your eye layer control motor. You got your throttle position sensor here. And you've got your crankshaft position sensor running down the front of the engine right here goes to that this went to a temperature sensor on the thermostat housing and this went to your alternator you got to your, your power wire your ground to your frame your alternator and then this connector here that's pretty simple and then obviously you got your injector connectors on this side there's some connector here um, i don't recall what that went to but i'll figure it out later um, let me see, you know, like I said, you got four injectors on this side. And I believe that's it as far as electrical connections on this engine. So I'm going to start disconnect all these, putting tape where I said I was going to put tape, and then I'll show another video once the uh, harness is uh, about ready to pull off the engine. All right, continuing with the uh, teardown of the 5.0 Mercruiser MPFI engine. Uh, things are looking a lot uh, cleaner now. The harness has been removed the engine. There's the harness on the floor. And uh, I'll be putting it in a bucket in a minute. But anyway, so what I did is I basically removed it from the front, unwrapped it around this side. Same thing over there. Removed the stuff on, you know, removed all connections on the front and kind of unwrapped it to, unwrapped it to the back. And already had, then uh, there's two bolts up here holding some uh, circuit breakers down. Took those loose. The bracket holding the, uh, boat to an uh, engine connector and already had already taken loose so it all just kind of peeled off and uh, off it came so there the harness is on off the engine and now I can uh, really start to get moving on this thing um one thing i've been doing is uh i've been i knew this engine was going to take it's got water and oil 
And uh, so I knew it was going to take a long time to drain because it's very thick and the orifice coming out of that drain tube is very small. So it's been draining for probably an hour and a half already. Um, I checked the oil level with the dipstick and it doesn't register. So I know there's less than, uh, less than probably four gallons of oil in this oil water mix in this engine. So I feel comfortable leaving this thing draining overnight into a five gallon bucket so it won't overflow. So now I'm about to, uh, now that the harness is off and I can really start seeing what I'm doing here, um, I believe I'm going to take the intake manifold off as an assembly with all this, uh, the idle air control motor still on it, throttle body. Um, I believe, well, this ignition module bracket will probably come off first since it's uh, independent of the, of the manifold. It'll come off first, but then that'll leave the rest of this manifold to come off the engine. So about to pull the intake manifold, the ignition coil, and that will leave me with an open valley and I can see what's going on inside the engine. So we're about to do that and I'll start showing another video when I get the intake off. Okay, continuing with the uh, tear down of a 5.0 liter uh, MPFI Mercruiser engine. Um, I just pulled the intake manifold off and I'll just make a few observations before I uh, uh, end part two and uh, then part three will be the rest of the engine taking the heads off and so forth. Um, first of all, the uh, intake gaskets are, are in decent shape. I don't see any major problem with them. Um, there's a lot of rust, but that's just because the engine was uh, uh, submerged underwater. But um, the intake gasket itself on the starboard side is in decent shape. Unlike deck school gaskets, this one is intact, so I don't see any major problems with that. Same with the other side. On the port side of the engine, and uh, pardon me if I get my port and starboard mixed up. I'm still not real familiar with all that boat jargon, but um, I just rebuild the engines. Um, so you can see that the uh, intake gasket is in decent shape on both sides. No major problems. The gasket's intact. It's not peeling apart. So this is a sign that you can go back with plastic gaskets on boats. Wouldn't do it on cars though, because the deck's cool. Right in freeze period. So beyond that, the other observation I've noticed in this uh, big one is that this is apparently not a roller cam engine. The spider that holds the roll, holds the, uh, the lock and plates for the lifters that keep from spinning is not here. The block is designed for it, but there's no spider in here. And there's no plates that go around. The lifters are down low and there's no plates to prevent the lifters from spinning. So um, these lifters apparently are, this is apparently a flat tap at camshaft, which uh, kind of blows my mind. I didn't know they still made those in Vortex. This is a Vortex engine because it had Vortex heads and Vortex intake, but it's uh, a flat tap at cam. And uh, depending on the shape of this camshaft, uh, I'm gonna do a little research, but I would recommend to go back with a roller cam if the cam's destroyed. Um, this is kind of a unique situation I hadn't seen in a Vortec engine before. Not sure why they did it. Maybe they uh, couldn't get a marine cam for a 5.0 and a roller application. Not sure. But that's not true because I've already thrown down one 5.0 and it had a roller cam. So I really don't know the answer to this. So I'll uh, discuss it with the owner and find out what, uh, what he wants to do going forward. But um, this is the end of part two. I want to call it a night. I want to tear down with this engine and uh, start up fresh again the next day. And uh, the next day I'll be pulling the valve covers off, the heads, and then uh, hopefully by tomorrow all the oil will be drained out of it. And uh, well, the oil should be drained out of the engine down the pan. So that's because I've had it upright for a long time. But um, hopefully the, the pan will be dried or empty enough to where I can get this thing off and flip it over and the oil won't spill everywhere. But even if it does, I've got a this is my special tear down engine stand where the, uh, the center of it's uh, free so I can put a, a big tub down there and catch oil that falls off the engine. So you can see that some of those other stands have a crossbar and kind of makes it hard to catch oil on the thing. Kind of, kind of a dumb design, honestly. But this is a heavy duty engine stand so uh, I can drain oil on this easily. And that's it. And uh, so stay tuned for part three where I finish tearing down this 5.0 liter uh, Mercruiser MPFI engine. Thanks for watching.